Adriatica Ionica race. It's stage three. It's a hilly final, um, followed by an uphill drag. So we go skip to about 16.9k to go. There was only coverage from 30k, and this is the Casale climb, 6.7k, average gradient at 6%, max 14. Uh, it, the brake was out front by 34 seconds, but it was pretty obvious it was going to get caught on this climb. Uh, and we had most of the leading groups behind. The main people setting the pace were Bardiani Chiesefa, as they are in the leader's jersey with Pipo Zanna. Here comes Cepeda, who's a, only a couple seconds behind. He's pacing hard for Tetz Fazion. Tetz Fazion obviously won the stage yesterday. Um, well, stage two it was, um, and was looking pretty good. On this sort of finish, they'd expect that he probably would be able to win if they play their cards right. Um, again, the climb is not super, super hard in terms of the fact like it's a 6% average, but it has some steeper parts. And you can see here, uh, Cepeda again is going strong. He's managed to drop pretty much everyone except the top five on GC. Um, you can see Zana is in the blue leader's jersey. Uh, and then we also have some of his domestiques, Tetz Fazion, as well as um, the Astana rider, um, we are Vadim Pronsky. Um, so again, you can see Paul Doubles now made the group again, which is good. He had a, you know, an interesting day yes, on um, on stage two where he followed the move early and got spat. But I think today was a lot better from him. Um, looked good on the climbs. You can see it's actually pretty steep here. And we also got some uh, got some other riders. Anyway, we skip ahead and this is the big move. This is Giovanni Carboni, who races at Gazprom, which has now been cancelled by the UCI. And um, he's now racing with the Italian team. And he takes big risk in the corner. Big, big risk in the corner. Nothing really happened over the top. And then suddenly, on the downhill, Carboni thought, let's just absolutely launch it. And you can see here, there's not really too many teams willing to control it straight away. And on this downhill, he like managed to basically you know, the corner a lot more aggressively than else, carry a lot more speed through the corners. Um, like dive bombing people in the first couple was pretty neat moves. And I'd say it was, I didn't actually know that he was that good at descending. Um, he's obviously raced quite a lot for Bardiani in the Giro before. This looks terrifying at the moment by not having enough gas to keep out the way of Carboni. Um, but yeah, he's taking massive, massive risk in this, risking life and limb for the win. But I guess he needs to, he doesn't technically have a contract at the moment. But you can see the police motorbikes can't get out of the way either. Um, he's getting a lot of help, I guess, from the police motorbikes, um, which is not great. But again, the gap has gone out to like five, six seconds, which isn't too much if people were willing to chase. Because you think on the downhill, if you're um, <clears throat> Nippo uh, Bariani, you wouldn't want to chase because it's too risky. You just le let them go five, six seconds and then chase on the flat where it's easy to bring them back. Because trying to close six seconds on a descent, you've got to take some big risks um, and even more than him. And he's going mental. Anyway, we skip ahead because the boy was basically just riding on his own to six kilometers to go. This was one of the last um, sort of places to get distance. And you can see there's been attacks that already. Uh, I think Paul Double was actually out the road at this point. Romsky's looking okay. Zan is still there. You can see Tetz Fatson is climbing really, really well at the moment uh, and he's following no worries at all. Um, and Carboni is still out front, but only by a little bit, only like eight, 10 seconds. It wasn't really a massive gap for any of it, but it was more the fact that just no one could actually close it. I thought on this climb, to be honest, if they hadn't attacked each other and they just set a really hard pace, they probably could have got him because Carboni is a good climber, but he's not an unbelievable climber. You can see Cepeda actually got dropped there as well. Um, and then Paul Double is working his way back on as well. Um, and you can see there's big gaps today. I, I was surprised today. I didn't think there would be massive gaps, but actually more gaps today um, than you could imagine. And it's also really shaken up the GC as well. So here's Paul Double now chasing on his own. Um, boy needs some narrow handlebars, I'm not going to lie. Um, but he's now ahead of the chases, basically. They're all just looking at each other. And I guess the thing is, he's quite far down on GC in comparison to them. He's like four minutes, five minutes down. Um, so him taking back some time was a good move, actually. Um, and quite a smart ride from Paul. Because uh, I think, I mean, in the end, you'll see it doesn't actually gain too much time, if anything. But um, I think it's quite quite a good move just to go and just see what happens because I think other people will look at you and maybe try and get the stage win as well because Carboni um, obviously had been out front a lot but with 700 metres to go we're coming into the Flamme Rouge um, and again some more downhills Carboni taking big risk in every corner which is what we love to see um, it's sort of an uphill finish into the plaza they've done a lap of it before so they sort of were aware of the situation in the final and I guess they knew how far they could how fast they could go around each corner um, a lot of hairpins in this part of Italy it seems and uh, I think some of these climbs might have actually been used uh, in uh, Seti Mani Internazionale Coppia Bartoli as well. I, they seem pretty familiar um, from other races that I may have covered in the past. Uh, but yeah, going into the final corner, he actually has a massive gap um, compared to um, everyone else. They actually only really managed to close it on the final climb. And there's no way, like he looks back and he's like, all right, 
sweet i've won big risk on the downhill 300 meters to go like it's an uphill finish um but he managed to actually have like a 15 second gap um at the end of the day um oh no actually sorry it might have been a, it might have been a bigger gap actually so it's 25 second gap um back to tets Fatsion and paul double um who finished on the same time uh, which we'll see in a minute and again you can see this uphill is drag is like definitely suits tets Fatsion very well and i think you know it's a shame for for him at least that they couldn't get but couldn't bring Carboni back and try and get another stage win for the boy. He's really happy. You can tell it's a big, big result for him because this could actually get him a new contract somewhere. Um, and he's really, you know, needs the contract at the moment because he's basically probably not getting paid um, at all, which is, yeah, through no real fault of his own. But he does seem to be, seem to be riding well. And I think it's the biggest win, probably, well, one of the biggest wins of his career. You can see Paul Double's getting caught on the line by Tets Fatsion. That was a really good ride by Paul Double coming third on the stage. Um, and he's now moved up to a top 10 overall. Um, Pipo Zana loses just a couple seconds to Tets Fatsion, but he also loses more bonus seconds because Paul took the rest of them, which actually in the grand scheme of the GC could be a big um, a big thing. I think that's going to be the, the hardest thing will be to actually stop Tets Fatsion winning is just to stop him doing the stage wins. And I think Valiani need to make sure they don't actually uh, make sure that the bonus seconds go. But you can see the stage results here. Carboni wins, followed by Tets Fatsion, double Zana. And then we'll go to the GC as well, um, where now the top top 10 is pretty far apart, actually, except the first five riders or so. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video, and I'll see you in the next one.